Hey guys, I am back from all of my traveling. I could not be happier to just be home, sitting in front of the camera and filming something for you guys. I have been really missing doing this and I'm just, I'm like really, really excited to get into this video because we're gonna be talking about something pretty exciting. <clears throat> Excuse me, so exciting I'm getting choked up. Uh, pretty exciting, pardon my appearance. I, you know, sometimes I show up here <laughs> with a t-shirt on, Generally, I try and put on something a little bit nicer, but because I've been traveling so much, everything is in the laundry. So uh, pardon my t-shirt appearance. I even have, which side is it on? I have like a hole right here. <laughs> Let's just hide that. So today we're gonna to be talking about the brand new La Prairie Skin Caviar Loose Powder. And I started to put on foundation and I'm using the Skin Caviar Essence in Foundation. It's kind of like their cushion foundation has an SPF 25. And I, I'm doing this about cushion because it has this weird netting and you press and the liquid comes out. I think there's probably a cushion underneath, but anyway, it's not like a, a typical cushion foundation. But I started to put this on, so I have it on about half of my face, and I thought, why don't I just apply it with you guys because this is part of the collection. So there's a whole Skin Caviar complexion collection, and there are basically like six things are part of it. There is the foundation that I think is very, very popular. It's probably one of the most popular La Prairie products out there in terms of their makeup. Uh, it's the one that comes in the bottle, has a concealer at the top, it comes with like a little concealer brush. I don't have that because it is a more medium to full coverage foundation. I may try it one day, but I just, especially in the summertime, I like things that are a little bit lighter. I really enjoy this Essence in Foundation, uh, Cushion Foundation in the summertime. So if I do plan on getting it, I'll probably get it in the fall, winter. Um, so I don't have that. We'll be putting this on together. And then they also came out with a brand new powder foundation. And because I have dry, sensitive skin, it's just not something that really interests me. So I definitely passed on that. But they came out with this loose powder as well and comes in this box. Uh, again, I've been traveling. So when I came home, it was waiting for me. It had been delivered uh, while I was away. So I haven't even opened it up. We're going to be doing a full day wear test with this loose powder. They also released three new brushes. Sorry, so there's seven things that are part of this Skin Caviar Complexion Collection. So four color products and then three brushes. There's a complexion loose powder brush, a powder foundation brush, and then a liquid foundation brush. I have so many brushes <laughs> that I decided to skip on the loose powder brush when I purchased this. So I'm just gonna be using what I have in my arsenal. La Prairie has a skincare uh, line called the Skin Caviar line. It comes in their kind of signature cobalt blue packaging. And this complexion series basically has the Skin Caviar skincare benefits infused in them. So I am very excited to give this loose powder a shot. You guys know how much I like loose powder. I prefer loose powder to press powder to set and finish my makeup. And I was doing a little bit of reading on this powder and it says that you can use it to set and to finish. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let me go ahead and finish applying this foundation with you guys. I have it in the color Pure Ivory N20 and I got this last summer because I remember bringing this to New York in the summertime when it was really hot and humid and this foundation held up really, really well. So in my mind, this foundation is kind of like a summertime foundation. So I'm glad they kind of extended the line and it's kind of reminded me about this foundation, which I have not used in a very long time. So I use a sponge because this mechanism here is kind of like a click you like press down, it clicks, and then the product comes up. It'd be hard to do that with a brush. Um, you'd be kind of smushing all of the bristles. And it comes with a powder puff thing like this, which I, I don't really like. So I've been using my beauty sponge. This is a Sonia Kashuk one from Target, which I really love. And like I mentioned, I basically applied it to this half of my face. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish applying it to the left side of my face. The only downside to this foundation, I think, is the fragrance. It is, um, there's a fragrance. I don't, I don't think it's heavily fragranced. It's not like unbearable, but there is a fragrance. And if you are sensitive to fragrance, you are not gonna like this. Um, I'm fairly sensitive to fragrance, but if it's a fragrance I like, it's fine. And this one, I don't really mind. It's just kind of, um, it's a fragrance. It doesn't really smell like flowers or citrus or anything in particular or musky. It just. I don't know, it just smells like La Prairie Skin Caviar uh, skincare products, if you are familiar with that. Coverage of this foundation 
is like a light medium, especially when you apply it with a sponge. This definitely shears it out a bit, but it builds pretty quickly. I feel like it builds to a rock solid medium with like two light coats. Like as soon as I go over it twice, I feel like I get a really pretty solid coverage there. Oh my God, there's a fuzzy on my face. All right, before we get into the powder, I'm just gonna use a little bit of concealer. This is the La Prairie Light Fantastic Cellular Concealing and Brightening eye treatment it has the world's longest name it comes uh in this case it's like refillable and you just kind of stick it in you put this collar on you screw it on and this is the case that it comes in it's pretty flashy it's very nice and it's one of those click ones with the brush applicator um, i like this product but i cannot stand i think i kind of have a defective applicator when i click i don't know if you guys can see when I click, all the product comes out of this one side of the brush. It doesn't come out of the top. It doesn't come out of both sides. It just comes out of this one side. It's very, very annoying to me, but this is a nice product. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of dab some onto my under eye area. And this has a pretty strong kind of like color correcting tinge to it. It's um, very, very peachy. And you don't need a lot of this product. It's fairly, it's very creamy, it has a lot of pigmentation, so I'm just gonna use just that amount, and I'm just using the same beauty sponge and blending that in. So there it is, worked into my skin. It's definitely very brightening for around the eyes. I have it in the shade 10, by the way, if you are interested. That is the Light Fantastic Eye Treatment from La Prairie. So let's go ahead and get into this loose powder now. So this is the box that it comes in. This is actually an outer sleeve. This slides out and we have the silver La Prairie box here. Let me take this plastic wrap off. So I purchased this off of Cosbar.com. They are an online retailer. They also have brick and mortar stores. Um, I think they're based in California. Anyway, I ordered uh, the color Translucent One. So it says it's supposed to refine skin's texture, smooths the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, and minimizes the appearance of pores. Preserves the level of hydration in the skin, which was the selling point for me, leaving it with a feeling of comfort. Sets foundation for long wear, provides a natural matte luminous finish for a youthful glow. It also says is the perfect conclusion to an indulgent beauty ritual, the first loose powder infused with caviar extract for complexion perfection. Uh, skin caviar loose powder sweeps on lightly, embracing skin with the most feather light whisper of powder for a flawless finish. It illuminates the complexion and sets makeup for an all day youthful, natural, shine free finish. Housed in an elegant cobalt blue jar, I guess we'll see that in a second, with a convenient hinged lid, skin caviar loose powder also comes with a complimentary portable jar for touch ups during the day. Oh, there are also some application tips on their website, but let's go ahead and open this first. So, curious about the to go jar. They have um, an existing loose powder. I think it's called their like cellular treatment loose powder. And I know it has a full size and it also comes with a travel size. So I didn't know if this was going to come with it or not. And there's a little pamphlet here is inside the box. Here is the powder. This jar is really heavy. I think it's all in the lid, but there's a little window with the powder on the inside there. And here's that hinge that they're talking about in the lid. And then there is a smaller jar. I don't know can't tell by the description if it's a jar that actually has powder. Oh yeah, it does. I don't know if it was like an empty one that you could put powder into, um, but it looks like you can flip this open. There's a little puff and then you can remove foil before use. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hold on to this in case I do want to travel with this guy. But let's go ahead and I'm just, I'm surprised at how heavy this is. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So here is the lid. That's nice, kind of stays up if you want to use the mirror. Nice big powder puff, really soft. The seal is still there, but it looks like maybe some got out. So let's go ahead and remove this seal together. Okay, I have to admit the removal of this seal was not quite as satisfying <laughs> as some others have been. I'm trying to make sense of this. So there are holes there and then there's this switch, this like open and close. So this apparently is open and now all of these holes are now open. And then if I move this up, it apparently closes everything. But I already see powder on top. So 
I don't know how secure this little latch is. I guess we'll see. Open the lid and unlock the sieve by sliding the button. Close the lid again before gently shaking the jar to release the powder. Open again and with the accompanying generous puff. Apply to face, swirling motion. Okay, so for the application, they're saying to open this, which is down. Close the lid, gently shake the jar to release some powder, and then open this lid again. Nothing, nothing really happened. Maybe I shook too gently. Oh, okay, that did it. Oh, and because I moved it upside down, <laughs> I got powder on the mirror. Stupid me. Um, so there is the powder. Let me see if there is a tint. I'm assuming there's a little bit of a tint to it, even though the names are translucent, but there's translucent zero, one, etc. And I think I mentioned I got translucent one. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of pigment to it. Um, so I don't usually use a puff to apply powder. Uh, occasionally I do. I guess it kind of depends on my mood. I've noticed when I apply it with a puff, um, it's a little bit thicker. And I really, again, I have dry skin. So I really like a light kind of layer of powder, especially when I set my makeup. I just wanted to set my makeup and that's it. I don't really need that kind of mattifying quality to it. There is definitely the La Prairie Skin Caviar um, scent to this. Again, if you're sensitive to fragrance, you're probably gonna to wanna to stay away from this. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite powder brushes. This is the Chikahoto Z1 brush. And I'm just going to, well, I'm gonna tap it into the powder that's on the mirror there. I wanna get that off. And I'm gonna just kind of knock off the excess there. So I have a little bit on my brush and I'm going to set around my eye first. So I think I started to talk about the existing La Prairie loose powder, which is their cellular treatment powder. Oh yeah, I was talking about how it comes with like a little travel size. I've never used that powder. That has long been on my list of loose powders to try. Uh, and I'm glad I didn't since this new one came out, but I, I don't have that reference point. So I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to compare this powder to that one. So I'm just gonna sweep away any excess And I've only applied it to this side of my face. Uh, I'm hoping we can see a difference. Uh, I definitely see that this side is more uh, matte. It actually has a very nice kind of like velvety finish, but here's the powdered side and here's the unpowdered side. I think the powder added a little bit of coverage uh, to my foundation. I feel like the uh, sunspots, freckles on my cheek are um, a little bit more camouflage than they are on this side. Definitely a matte finish. Um, it says that there's supposed to be a little bit of radiance. I don't see that just yet. This is definitely a little bit more matte than the loose uh, Kogendo powder that I love that I just kind of talked about in my favorites. I feel like this has the same level of uh, like a matte finish to the Clay de Peau loose powder, also the Chanel loose powder. It kind of has that finish, but I feel like this powder has more coverage. It adds more coverage to my foundation than either of those powders. I feel like the lines underneath my eyes, they're not being emphasized. I don't necessarily think they're being camouflaged though. I just think that they're they're there. They don't look horrible. They don't look dry or anything. I do feel like my laugh line, like right here looks a little emphasized. I feel like my severely deep forehead lines, those are just there. I don't think they're either emphasized or camouflaged. Well, since we're here just kind of playing around with this powder, kind of testing it out, I think what I will do is use the powder puff and apply it to this side of my face. So I'm going to start by applying some under my eye using that press and roll technique. You basically want to get some powder at the edge of your puff and you want to like press and roll it underneath your eyes. And that's supposed to really help set concealer down. It's really supposed to help, I think, camouflage the lines and kind of help your concealer avoid any creasing or anything. I usually avoid this technique, um, not because I don't think it's good, but because it just adds uh, a very kind of like thick layer of powder to your under eye and it uh, that just always makes me nervous just because i have dry skin but i figured i would try that today see how it goes see what you guys think i'm gonna go ahead and dip the puff just kind of into the jar here it's difficult to get an even coating of this that's kind of the best i can do let's see
So there it is applied with a puff. It definitely looks um, heavier to me, a little bit cakier to me than this side. So I'm gonna take my powder brush, my Chikahoto Z1 brush again, and, and just kind of dust away any excess that I can. I have to tell you the fragrance in this powder is bugging me a little bit. I feel like I'm kind of inhaling it and I feel like it's bothering my throat a little. I think brushing away the excess I think really helped actually. Well, there it is applied to my whole face. This combination um, of this foundation and this powder, definitely a fuller coverage than what I'm used to. It's also a little bit more matte than what I'm used to, but I, I think if I wanted something for like evening, something that I wanted to make sure stayed put, again, maybe if I was like in a humid climate, this would actually be a great combo. But let me go ahead and put on the rest of my makeup and then I will be back to use this as a finishing powder. I'm not sure that I would use this as a finishing powder because I feel pretty powdered down already, but maybe I'll just buff it into one of my cheeks just to see if there's like any difference or if the buffing action kind of brings out a little bit of radiance in the powder. We'll see, but let me go ahead and put on the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. All right, I am back with makeup applied. I actually filmed another video um, using the new Viseart Warm Edit palette. It's that little cute little 12 pan palette. Uh, I don't know which video is gonna go up, but this one is definitely coming at you either right before or right after this video. So I just wanted to check back in. It's been about like an hour and a half and I just wanted to take a little look at how this powder is doing. All right, so, so far I don't really see any changes. Um, not that I was expecting to, I've just been sitting here for the past hour and a half, but everything looks okay. Let me do some close-ups while we're at it. Uh, so you can take a look at uh, what my skin looks like. So we'll start from the forehead and we will pan down. Does my face look blurred to you guys? Let me know down below in the comments section because that is sort of my interpretation here. But let me know down below in the comments section if you feel like you see a little bit of a blurred effect. I definitely see it like right here. I feel like there's like this hazy filter over my eyes. It also looks really nice on my cheeks. I feel like it does give a really nice finish. Oh, that's what we were gonna do. We were gonna apply this as a finishing powder to one cheek. So I've got my trusty Sonia G Face One brush my favorite brush for uh, finishing. And I'm gonna go back into the powder here. There was definitely some left in here. It's a little bit messy. Got a little bit on my brush here. I'm just gonna take a look at my cheek here before. Take it all in. And now let me go ahead and press some in and buff it in. Okay, I'm seeing shimmers on this side of my skin. I am fairly certain there are no shimmers in this powder. So I actually took out my other Sonia G Face One brush, which I know is clean. I thought this one was cleaned too, but I just wanna be sure. I'm thinking maybe there was some leftover finishing powder on this, but I have definitely a clean Face One brush here. I added some of the La Prairie powder and I'm gonna buff it onto this side of my cheek. And then we'll be able to tell for sure. I'm also not going to buff over the highlight because I'm wondering if that's kind of bringing it down a little bit. I'll just stick to right down here. So I definitely see a sheen. After buffing in this powder, I feel like it produces a little bit of a sheen. That is so interesting. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like a little bit of a pearly sheen there, which I did not see when I used it as a setting powder when I didn't really buff it in, when I just kind of pressed it in and kind of swept it away. I didn't really see that. It looked very matte to me. This is really pretty. I don't think I've ever used a powder that kind of um, had a change in its finish. This is really, really great. If it could be used both as setting and finishing and have kind of like both properties to it, I think that would be amazing. So like I mentioned, it's a little bit after 11. I put this on originally, you know, right around nine o'clock this morning, and then I'll be back at the end of the day to show you how this powder held up. I'm really excited by this finish that I got after buffing it in. I think that's really interesting. Anyway, I will see you guys very soon. Hey guys, it is about five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm so sorry. I just got really busy with my day, completely forgot to do a check-in. So here we are eight hours after uh, the initial application of 
this face, the foundation, the powder and everything, we are gonna specifically talk about the powder. And I have not been outside today, but I have been doing a lot of like unpacking, laundry, cleaning, all that kind of stuff. So I do feel like I've been really active today. The makeup on my face looks exactly the same. The foundation and the powder has really just, has really just kind of stayed put on my skin. Let's do a close up actually before I continue talking. We'll start with the forehead and um, pan down around my eyes, underneath my eyes, around the tip of my nose and my chin. Now, if you're new to my channel, um, generally, if I'm gonna lose coverage or lose uh, foundation or powder or anything, it's usually around the tip of my nose, which is the oiliest part of my face. It's far from oily, but it's the oiliest part of my face. And if I'm gonna experience any kind of cakiness or uh, the texture of the makeup starts to look a little funky, that's generally around my mouth, sometimes along the hairline, um, on my forehead. And I don't see any of that with this makeup. I feel like my makeup looks pretty much exactly the same as when I put it on at nine o'clock this morning. So just to kind of like sum up all of my thoughts about this powder. So in terms of my under eyes, I don't think that it necessarily like camouflages my lines, but I do feel like the lines under my eyes are not emphasized. I feel like while it has mattified my skin, it doesn't make my under eyes look dry or anything, which is great. I did feel like upon first application that my uh, laugh lines, my expression lines here, look like they were emphasized a little bit. It looked like um, the product was kind of sinking into them, but I feel like throughout the day, I don't know, maybe just mixing with the oils in my skin, I feel like that looks a little bit better. I don't feel like my laugh lines look quite as um, emphasize as they did when I first applied this powder. My forehead, I have very deep expression lines up there. I, I think they look fine. I don't think that they look emphasized. I don't think they look camouflaged or anything. I think it looks fine. What I do find very interesting about this powder is you can definitely use it as a setting powder. It has a matte finish if that's what you like. That happens to be what I like in terms of a setting powder. But usually if I like a powder for setting, it's matte. But when it comes to finishing powders, I tend to like my powders to be a little bit more radiant. I don't want them to be too matte. Um, I just feel like with my dry sensitive skin it just makes my skin look even more dry and heavy and cakey and when I buffed it in really well with the Sonia G face one brush it really looked like it took on a different finish instead of when I just put it on my skin as setting powder. So with setting powder, I kind of tapped it all over and then I brushed any sort of excess away. With the finishing powder, I really worked it in. I really buffed it in. I really kind of like burnished my skin and I felt like I could see a little bit of a satin sheen here. On this cheek, I used a brush that I thought was clean, but I saw some little like sparkles in there, which this powder doesn't have. So it's this side of my face that I used definitely a clean brush it's actually a brand new brush and i buffed the powder in and i still got i didn't get those little bits that was definitely must be my dirty brush but i definitely got like a little bit of a satin sheen and i've never experienced that with a powder before for me either a powder is matte or it has a little bit of a sheen but this one i feel like if you buff it in it kind of really brings out a satin finish so i thought that was really interesting of course i'm going to keep playing with this powder and play with different ways of applying it so i'm very impressed with this powder so far but there are two things about it that i think will keep me from using it as my daily powder one the fragrance I mentioned it when I applied it. It has the La Prairie Skin Caviar fragrance. The fragrance did not dissipate for me until about three or four this afternoon. I feel like it just kind of started to fade away. For me, that is just far too long. If, you know, if I put a product on and it kind of has a fragrance when I first put it on, but it pretty much dissipates as soon as I like finish my makeup, that's the most ideal. You know, if you have to put a little fragrance in there, if that's your signature fragrance, I get it. You add a little bit, I put it on and it's kind of gone. This stuck around. This really, really stuck around, and I am not a fan of that. I felt like every time I, you know, was doing something, like when I was moving my laundry from my washer to my dryer, every time I moved, I felt like I caught a whiff of it, and that really bugs me. So that is one thing that's definitely gonna prevent me from using this on a daily basis. Um, the second thing is that it definitely adds coverage to my foundation it definitely is i don't know, like a heavier duty kind of powder and i like my makeup to generally be again on an everyday basis i like it to be kind of light i don't like that much coverage i don't want it to be obvious i just don't i just don't like heavy makeup this is something i feel like i will definitely be thinking of 
and will want to use when I want something that's going to give me additional coverage. But on the everyday, it's just not something that I look for, that I want. In terms of the skincare benefits that it claims to have, I don't, I can't really comment on that. It just, it's only been one day. And it being a product that I probably won't use every day, I really don't know if I'll ever be able to tell whether or not this has any skincare benefits, but it is supposed to kind of retain the moisture of your skin. And for a powder that is on the heavier side for me, uh, my skin doesn't feel it. It doesn't uh, feel dry. I don't feel it on my skin, which is great. I just smell it on my skin, um, but I don't feel it on my skin. And my dry skin definitely feels fine. It doesn't feel like I've had a heavy powder on or anything. Anyway, let me know what your comments are down below in the comment section. Leave me any questions that you may have. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.